Hello and welcome to part one of the weaving advent calendar video series. Um, today we are going to be starting with the very basic plain weave, um, which is yeah the simplest form of weaving. Um, if you haven't yet warped, um, added warp thread, which is, is these threads going um, vertically on your loom. If you haven't yet warped your frame, um, then I suggest watching my warping a frame loom video, which I will put a little link to in the top right hand corner. Um, and so you can get to the same stage as I'm here. I have um, I have 21 threads on my loom here, um, which is, it is handy to have an odd number. Um, so that's a good idea, but it's not a must. Um, and without further ado, let's get started. So um, let me start with the shuttle. So if you buy the advent calendar or a weaving yarn bundle from me, um, you'll get yarn in these kind of little um, balls um, and you can pull the yarn out of the centre of those which makes it nice and easy to, um, oh sorry, bump the camera, which makes it nice and easy to pull out um, without it getting tangled. Um, and I've started putting it on my shuttle here, this is called a shuttle. You can put it on a weaving needle as well, um, but I prefer a shuttle. Um, so, um, at least for this, for, for plain weave. Um, so to load the shuttle up is quite simple, you can put some around the middle. I also like to put some around the edges so that you um, minimise the bulk. And you can see you just do that by alternating the side on which you put the yarn. And that creates a kind of crisscross pattern on the side and makes sure that all the yarn bulk isn't just on the top and bottom of the shuttle. Right, we're going to leave quite a long tail um, for this. Um, so I'm just going to leave it like that and so let's um, start, so let's assume first that we wouldn't have this and you can see all the um, warp threads are in one level here and the most basic weaving method is plain weave where you go over, under, over, under, over, under the warp threads and just keep going across like that and then on the next row you would do the opposite so everywhere where you went over on the first row you would go under on the second oh sorry i almost forgot leave a nice long tail here yep so the tail about i've got one about four times the width of my loom um and oh, banging into the light there and so on the way back we do the opposite, so you can see that because I had an odd number I was over that first and last warp thread, so we're going to go under it instead, over the next one, under the next one, and so you can see that the threads that I went over previously I'm now going under and vice versa. Now to speed this weaving process up, my loom has a clever little heddle, so a heddle is something that raises certain numbers of um, warp threads for you so that you don't have to push it and wriggle it through like that. Um, so let me pull that first one through. Be careful not to tug on it too much or you will um, get a weaving that kind of goes in and out. Um, and I'm not going to push this down too far either because we're going to be doing twining stitch tomorrow. Um, so really easy way thanks to this little heddle here that I have. This is a bar heddle, it's quite simple, it just raises every other thread for you. And what that enables us to do is instead of having to weave through, wriggle through like I was doing, we adjust this so I previously went under that last um, warp thread so now I want to go over it so if I push this heddle so that the um, that first thread is down and the next thread is up it creates a shed like that that I can go through and just push my shuttle through in one go rather than having to move it up and down. There we go, so I was just adjusting that tension so that we get a nice loop on the end without tugging on it too much but equally not being miles away from it. Oh, that was too much, there we go. Right, and so when I come back I push this the other way and you can see that will ensure that I go under that warp thread that I last went over, push the shuttle through and you can see that has pushed my shuttle through through the shed that is created there between every other warp thread. That way we just push it through and pull and there you
you go it's much faster than weaving over under over under and you just go along alternating this of course if you don't have this you can also um, add something called a pickup stick a pickup stick is a relatively simple tool you can use another shuttle that you've got lying around you could use a ruler you could use a um, cooking spatula um, anything really that is not too high not too tall um, and long enough to go across and um, strong enough that you can lift it without it snapping and so what you would do is that you would weave that in over under over under Okay, pretend that this isn't here. Um, there we go, almost. And then whenever you want to go, so on this row, for example, you can see the shed I've just come through. So in this direction, I would weave normally like that. Um, and then when I come back in the other direction, I would be able to lift this and go through the shed. So it doesn't save you quite as much time as having this um, but it does save you half the time I mean in one of the directions you've got that shed created for you and then in the other direction you will weave over under manually um, so that's how pickup stick works if you haven't got one of these bar heddles so yeah there you go that's all there really is to plain weave don't tug too much um, make sure to push it down nicely so that it's evenly spaced between every row or every pick I should say the only other thing I will say about plain weave is get a nice firm plain weave. You need to make sure that you've got a good balance between your warp and your weft thread. Um, so in this case, um, they're almost balanced. I've got six ends per inch um, on this frame, which just means that's the number of warp threads that I've got going per inch. Um, and that works, I find, really well with this Aran weight yarn. Um, but you might notice if you use some thinner yarn, like this red one for example, you can see that's quite a bit thinner than that one, um, then you would get um, looser plain weave and it would move up and down more easily. So if that's the case, what I recommend is finding, taking this length of yarn and doubling it up. So either get two balls of it so that you can hold it double like that, or fold it over like I've just done. So this is one continuous length that I've folded over there um, and then put it on your shuttle that way so that when you weave, um, you've got a double thickness um, going across just because that will, will help a little bit to stop it sliding there, make it bulkier. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all there is to plain weave. I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching and I will see you tomorrow for the twining stitch. Bye.